heavenly host. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, and let all the earth sing for his praise. Bless the Lord, oh my. Morning, good morning. Good morning. So we, we are so glad you are here. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yes. 
So glad you're here. If you want to go ahead and check in to Facebook, you can let them know you are back in the house. Hallelujah. Instagram, wherever it is that you want to check in, your social media, and go ahead and let them know that you've come to worship the Lord this, minute, this morning. Stand to your feet if you would. Let's put our hands together and magnify his name. Yes. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, almighty ones. Bless the Lord, ye heavenly host. Bless the Lord, all ye his angels. And let all the earth sing forth his praise. Oh, sing it again. Bless the Lord. Almighty ones, bless the Lord, ye heavenly host. Bless the Lord, all ye his angels, and let all the earth sing forth his praise. Come on, and praise his name, come on, and Oh, 
Praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but just us being here today is a declaration of victory. The us being able to come back together, us coming back in here into a building, we're declaring Jesus is Lord. Jesus is greater than any virus, anything that can come, any pandemic. Jesus is greater, and this is a declaration of what we're <coughs> declaring today, that God is greater. God is bigger, and we're just declaring that today and this morning. We're glad you joined with us here today on Facebook, on, online with the Connect Church. We're glad to have you here with us. Any form and any fashion that you're here, we're glad to have you here. We're glad to be back into the building. And I'll just, uh, Pastor Jay and I were talking about it a little bit. Uh, we talked with Caleb. Uh, it's really different preaching to an empty building with just a camera. Glad to see some folk in the building today. It's a funny thing to uh, talk to uh, and preach to a bunch of car and windshields. It's a different experience, but I'm glad I get to see some eyeballs anyway today. So we're glad you're here today. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. We're going to believe God for great things. We're going to believe God for big things. We know that there's been lots of concern. And I can just say I really believe that the enemy was trying to cast fear on all of us. But faith is greater than fear. And we will not be overcome. We will not be those that shrink back. But we're going to stand. We're going to be wise. We're going to do all the things that we need to do. But we will not operate in fear. Thank God. We're going to be wise as a serpent, gentle and harmless as a dove. So understand that's what God wants us to do. We're going to believe we got some prayer requests that we need to pray. We need to pray for Sister Pat continue to pray for her and the Newsom family. The Lord would just minister and we're believing God uh, for them and with them and what God's doing there in that household. We're believing God for Sister Annette still and we're still believing and praying. I'm trying to recall and there's some other things going on. I know there's been some loss of some family members uh, around and some of the, those that are connected with the church. So we're praying for them at the Lord would just minister. Uh, we're thankful, uh, I'm thankful to be much better myself and doing well. Alexis's brothers out of the hospital and uh, had to come and get a haircut yesterday. So uh, we, I was shocked to see him, surprised to see him, but doing better. So we thank the Lord for recovery and thank the Lord for those things. So we're thankful. So let's believe the Lord, whatever is going on with you. There's some folks that have been getting jobs during Corona. Praise the Lord. Glad to hear that. Know that. <clears throat> so we're believing the Lord that God's going to continue to do those things. Let's pray in faith believing. Father, we thank you, Lord. God, we just want to glorify you because, God, you weren't caught off guard. You weren't surprised. You weren't shocked on any of this going on, Father. And, God, I also declare that you were not the cause or the root of this. God, we know the enemy's come to kill, steal, and destroy, God. This attack of him, God, that he's tried to just destroy and manipulate all these different things, God. I thank you, Lord God, that we survived the storm. We've survived this onslaught, God. We are going to rise up as conquerors. God, we're, we are overcomers. And God, I thank you for that, Lord. God, you are with us, and, and your hand is upon us, God. God, I just declare that in the name of Jesus. God, I, we pray for the Newsom family. God, we pray for Sister Pat. God, we ask you, God, to minister, pour out, God. Be God in that family, God. Be God in that situation, God. God, you are bigger than any of these things, Father. In the name of Jesus, minister to her, Lord God. For Sister Annette, God, continue to comfort her, minister to her, heal her, Lord God. Minister to her family, Brother Jesse, God, just strengthen him. Refresh him, Lord God. You are able, God, and for every situation, God, every circumstance, God, there's been sickness, there's been loss, God. You are able, God. God, my heart goes out to those that haven't been able to work, God, those that's been impacted, God, just totally with this 
uh, pandemic, God, of, of loss of employment, God. In the name of Jesus, God, supply for them, God. Minister for them, Lord God. We ask you to do that, Lord. God, just touch their lives, God. Impact, intervene in their lives, God, as you are able, God. And I thank you for that, Lord God. Bless and minister. Encourage us, Lord God. Let us be people of faith, believing in you, God. You are bigger. You are greater, Lord. And I thank you for that, Lord. God, we're thankful to be able to gather together. God, we're just thankful to see one another's face, God. We're thankful, God. God, we thank you, Lord God, and we just bless your name for that. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. You can be seated if you'd like. Um, go ahead and just encourage you to give. You go ahead and do that uh, electronically. Uh, you can text to give. You guys, I know there's lots of you that have went uh, and have begun to do this in a new way, in a new fashion that, that, that you hadn't been doing electronically and those things before. Thank you so much for that. If you're here in the building and you would like to go ahead and swipe, the, uh, the, the swipe's available, the kiosk is available, you can do that. So uh, that's available, but uh, electronic giving in, on the uh, website, on the uh, cash app, the um, text to give, all those uh, areas are still available and we're still going. So we're thankful for you, thankful for you for joining us. And this is a Memorial Day weekend. This Memorial Day weekend is not about um, going to the beach or going up to the mountains. It's really about those that have sacrificed, those that have given, those that have ministered uh, to us and reached out and done something uh, beyond that and uh, those that we remember that have went on before us. And so we're remembering them and we're going to show you a video here just with that, with that in mind. Appreciate our military, appreciate all those that gave their lives and went before us and made us for that we can be free and we can defeat this uh, virus. And we thank the Lord for all of those of you who served. Thank you very much for that. And our first responders, and <coughs> I will say that even um, those that are working in the hospitals and the sacrifices that they're making, those nurses and uh, doctors and all those things that are going on, we thank the Lord for that. So we appreciate all of them that's doing that. Just wanted to get into the Word a little bit today, this morning. Pentecost Sunday is coming up next week, and so we're looking at that and anticipating that. I hope you know what that means. We'll talk a little bit about that next week. It's the birth of the church. It's the anniversary of the church of when the church was really began. And so we thank the Lord for that. We want to understand and know that we've got to uh, realize and uh, uh, realize, know that there was a promise given and there was a promise kept. And I saw a little thing and I've just kind of expanded on that. There was a promise given to Abraham that, that uh, he was going to be blessed and all the world would be blessed through him. And that was a promise given and that was a promise kept promise that there was a seed that was going to come and that's a promise that was given a promise that was kept there's a promise that jesus would die on a cross for all of us and that was a promise given and that promise kept 
there was a promise given that he would raise uh, three days after, after that, and there was to be a resurrection. That was a promise given and a promise kept. And so understand that there was a promise given that the Holy Spirit would be poured out. <coughs> and that was a promise given and a promise kept. The good news about that is that it was poured out and said never to be called back, never to be withdrawn, never to be taken back. So we thank the Lord for that. There's also a promise that's been given that he's coming again. <clears throat> and just as sure as all these other promises have been kept, so will that one. Promise given. So we're talking about, if you want to go to your Bible app, it's on your Bible app. If you're joining us on Facebook, you can go to your Bible app. And uh, we're doing these electronically now and just uh, uh, keeping them on there. And so it's there on the Version Bible app. And it's waiting on the promise, waiting on the promises of God, waiting on what God has promised you. Have God promised you something? Have you got a promise from God? Have you got a commitment from the Lord? Have you found something that you found and just read and something that just quickened in your spirit that God's promised you, you just confirmed that in you, that he was going to do something like that in your life? And you just know that that's going to happen. But what happens when it doesn't happen the next day? What happens when you've got to be like Abraham and wait for a son for 25 years? What happens when you've got to be like Noah and work on an ark for 100 years? Promise given, promise kept. 100 years it took him to finish the ark, but the rain came. Deliverance came. Salvation came. So we've got to understand the promise that God has given to me and to you that we've got to un understand it's still coming. There was a promise given to Elisha that he would have a double portion. He died, his bones were in a grave, and he had not yet resurrected two people. They threw a dead man on his bones and promise was given. Promise was kept. Let me just tell you, God's got a promise for us, and God's going to fulfill his promise. Will you wait for the until? Will you wait for the until? That's number one on mine. Will you wait for the until? Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until... You are endued with power from on high. <clears throat> Let me just use this portion of this verse as my uh, text today and as my thought for the day and my uh, foundation for today. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry. Everybody say tarry. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until. I'm afraid we've lost the art of tarrying until. Tarrying until. Will you tarry until the promise is fulfilled? Too many of us will tarry a day. We'll wait. And you, know, you know what tarry is? It's, it's waiting. We've got to wait upon the Lord. Those who wait upon the Lord renew their strength like that of an eagle's. Those that wait upon the Lord, and that's not somebody who's sitting down on their blessed assurance. That's like that waitress, when we get to go back to that restaurant, to where that she's going to come and, the, you know, they're going to come eagerly serving us uh, tomorrow or whenever they get to open back up. And they're going to come and serve you and wait on you, and they're going to come to your table. Let me take your order. Let me bring you your food. Let me do the, whatever you need. And they're going to be waiting on you the way that we're supposed to be waiting on the Lord to where that are you waiting are you tearing until are you serving until that promise is fulfilled that, that I just have to say to myself that is good you need to hear that you need to hear that right there you are you tearing are you waiting until 
Or have you got discouraged in your promise? Have you got discouraged in your waiting? Have you quit? Have you given up? Have you drawn back? Are you no longer anticipating, no longer expecting the promise to be fulfilled? Have you quit believing? Have you quit having faith? Have you decided it's too long, it's too late, God can't do it? Lazarus, they were said, Lord, don't even talk to him. It's been three days. He stinks. Has your situation got stinking yet? Has it got so late that it's stinking, that it's too late? Everybody says, oh, it's too late. The Spirit's left. There's no way. There's no possibility of resurrection. Let me just tell you, Jesus can call you by name. And change the circumstance. Jesus will fulfill that promise. Understand, there's something about a promise of God. If you and I will grab hold of it, he said he'll do it. And if we'll stand on that word and stand on that word, and when we've done all we can do to stand, stand therefore. Keep on standing. Keep on standing. That's what the Lord's telling us to do. On the next one, it says the Holy Spirit is opening our understanding i believe that i believe the lord's wanting us to tarry until to tarry until the fulfillment of the promise is there and he's going to open our understanding this is a scripture verse where jesus has taken them out he's met with them in jerusalem he's ate with them they're walking out to the mountain to where he's about to ascend and he's talking with them, and he's teaching them. And so he starts opening up the Scriptures to them just a little bit before. Verse 49, we're going to verse 44. Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the Scriptures. Everybody say comprehend. I'm here to tell you this morning, you're able to comprehend the promises of God. That God says that he's committed to us that he would open up our minds, open up our spirits, open up our understanding that you and I can comprehend what the Holy Spirit's doing, that you and I would have an understanding. And I believe God's wanting to open up us today. I believe he's opening up what's going on. He's trying to open up unto us everything that's taking place. And the Bible says that Jesus, while he was teaching them the word, you know, that's the word of God, that's our Bible that we have, that he opened them up. He opened up their spirit. He opened up their minds and opened up their understanding that they might comprehend, have a grasp and understanding, a learned type of ability to that, to where that they are able to understand the scriptures. Then he said to them, thus it is written, and thus it was necessary. Thus it was written, and thus it was necessary. It was written because it was necessary, and it was necessary so point to the, so necessary that it had to be written. And so God said that he's, this, these things had to be fulfilled. He had to suffer. He had to die. He had to bleed. He had to be shed, shed his blood. He had to be beaten. All those things were written and predicted. He had to be uh, born of a virgin. Had to be born in these different places. So it was necessary for this to be fulfilled. And so it was written and then it was fulfilled. Promise given promise kept it was necessary for it to be written and if it's going to be written the lord's going to fulfill it it was necessary for christ to suffer to rise to raise from the dead to rise from the dead the third day and that the repentance and the remission of sin should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at jerusalem and you are witnesses of these things we are to witness the power of God moving in our lives and seeing people saved. We are to witness to where, that we see what God's done. And it's real easy to witness. Do you know what God done for me? Do you know how God has helped me? Do you know what God did in my life to change my life around? That's witnessing. That's sharing the gospel for what God wants us to do. 
Number three says the Holy Spirit will sustain you in the season of until. The Holy Spirit will sustain you in the season and through the season of until. When you're in that season of waiting, when you're in that season of in between. See, understand that these things are, you know, not everything's a season, not everything's a long Sometimes it's just a short hallway to walk down a transition. And if you've been in that hallway of transition for uh, six months or six years, you might need to go ahead and move into your season. Hmm. And being assembled together with them, this is Acts chapter 1, verse 4, just a really kind of a repeat of what we read in Luke. And beginning assembled, being assembled together with them, he uh, commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. The promise of the Father, which he said, You've heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore then they came together. They asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It's not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. <clears throat> and just as sure as the Holy Spirit was promised, the Holy Spirit was fulfilled, and we see that in Acts chapter 2, where he filled the whole house where he, they were gathered. Your promise of fulfillment is through that of the Holy Spirit. I believe God's helping you and will help you. One of the reasons that we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for that sustaining power waiting for the until. Waiting for that thing where for we don't get discouraged, for we don't get down and out to where that the Holy Spirit will empower us not only to be a witness and see we think about that witness and we've preached this all of our lives I've heard this all my life that we're to be a the Holy Spirit will make you a witness to where you can go and testify of what God and Jesus has done for you yes he will but it's also for that you'll be a witness that you can go through the until waiting for the promise and be sustained by the power of God that you don't lose your joy, you don't lose your testimony, you don't lose those things around about you, that you are able to maintain your testimony because you're being sustained by the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, and it'll maintain you for the until. He'll see you through the season he'll see you through to the promise that god has for us there is a promise that god has given to us <clears throat> how do you judge him this is really what it boils down to how do you judge god how do you think about god what is your opinion of god is he a god that lives way up there that just really don't care or is he a god that's going to fulfill the promises and is God love, and does God love you? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive, to conceive seed. Ninety-year-old woman received power to receive a seed that was planted by a hundred year old man who better to know her own body knowing her own body was dead far as child conceiving goes by faith Sarah herself also received strength to, re to conceive seed she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised let me just tell you they waited 25 years now she's 90 years old her bodily functions had stopped 
doing the things that were required to be in childbirthing, and she knew her body was dead. But somehow or another, she was able to say, God, you are faithful. You are bigger and stronger than my, my body's telling me. You're able to work around my body. You're able to do what's required to do and to get done what needs to get done. And you can cause me to be receive a seed and conceive a child and have a son because you promised it and I deem you faithful. Let me just tell you, when you're waiting on a promise, when you're waiting on what God's promised you, it may take a while. More than likely, it will take a while because God's going to see how you judge him. Will you judge him faithful? Will you call him faithful? Will you say, he is able, no matter what's going on around me, what's, no matter what's going on in my body, what's going on outside my body, he is faithful. And I will call him faithful. We'll look at a few other promises that God has given to us. He's given us a promise to forgive. Verse John, chapter 1, verse 9, if you confess if we confess our sins, he is faithful. We might need to declare that again. He's faithful. God is faithful when we are faithless. He's still faithful when the world's turned his back on, on him. He's still faithful. He can't help it. It's his nature. He's just like he is love. He can't help it. It's his nature. It's who he is. He's faithful. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let me just tell you, whatever the world may deceive you, whatever the world may want to say to you, God is faithful, and he said if you'll confess your sins, that he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. Will you confess your sins to him? Will you call out on him? Let me just tell you, you're not unworthy. You're not unloved. His promise is for all of us. He said, whomsoever will call upon him, that he, is, he would forgive you of your sins. All the world can come to him. The, world, the plan was for all the world to be saved. We just simply have to confess and repent to him, for he is love. There's another promise he's given us and never leave you nor forsake you. During this uh, pandemic, there's lots of folks that have felt isolated. There's lots of folks that have felt alone, felt like God has, uh, has lost the battle, that God's left the building, that God's done all these things, and that they're worried about that. Let me just tell you, there's a promise we have that God said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. And there's several times he tells, tells Joshua that. This is quoted here in Hebrews 13, verse 5. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. Hmm. That's just a word right there within itself. Not even my point yet, but that's probably not a bad one. For he himself said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So you need to understand if there's any leaving going on, it's on your part. If there's any forsaking going on, it's on your part. Are you turning your back on God? But let me just tell you, if you have any inkling, if you have any desire, if you have any oomph, if you have any push about you that you're trying to serve God, God will be served. You can achieve it. You will find him. He will be with you, and he will stand with you if you will only pursue after him. You'll never, ever Never, ever, ever leave you nor forsake you. It's not in his nature. He's not capable because he is faithful. He's not able. So you've got a promise you need to stand upon. And if you think he has, you're just in the until season. He's going to show up, I promise you. Better than me promising you, he promised you. Understand, he's going to be there, and more than likely, he really already is. You just haven't heard from him. You just haven't seen it. You haven't quieted yourself down enough to say, God, I, I, you know, just got to look around behind you somewhere. Look underneath the sofa or something somewhere. He's there. 
and he's with you. God's never left you or forsaken you. We've got a promise of victory, just like we're here today in victory. We are victorious because we are here today. God's given us a promise of victory. Romans 8, 37, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. That's a promise that we have. You're a conqueror. Look at that person beside you. If you're at home, look at somebody around you and say, you're a conqueror. Actually, you're more than a conqueror. You're more. More. What's more than a, more than, what can be more than a conqueror? What can be more than victorious? Somebody who is greatly conquered. Somebody that's over abundantly. God's given us life and that life abundantly. I believe we're abundant conquerors. Not only are we, see, that's not being a survivor. That's being a conqueror. Just not going to see you through, but I'm going to come out with some good things. I'm going to come out like they came out of Egypt. They came out of Egypt fat. They came out of Egypt loaded. They were taking the wealth of Egypt, the most powerful country in the world, nearly bankrupt them because they were blessed. They said, guys, he's going to get out of here. Here, take the gold, take the silver. Get out of here. Go out, leave. Understand, God's going to make you more than a conqueror. We have the promises in him. We have the promise of overcoming. 1 John 4, 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Somebody say greater. <clears throat> greater is he that's in us. That's the promise. That's the promise that you and I have, that we, are, we have something greater inside of us than what the world's got inside them, than what the world's got inside of it. There's something greater inside of me, elder, there's something better inside me. I'm stronger. I'm capable. If I would simply be, understand and judge him faithful that he's not going to leave me, he's not going to forsake me, I've got something greater inside of me that's going to well up when all our other are dying, left and right, the Psalms 91 tell us that they can be 10,000 fall at our right hand. But I'll not see it. I'll be seated in my in, around my enemies and eating a dinner there and watching them go because God is in me and greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I got something different going on. There's something, there's a, there's a generator inside of me. There's a power source inside of me that they, they, they don't have. I can tap into something that God is supplying, and I can rise up because I know he's never left me or forsaken me. I've got a promise I can stand on. I've got something to, to rely on, and I believe God. I'm an overcomer because of him. I have a promise of strength that I can rely upon. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I can face a pandemic. I can face a, a, a virus. I can face sickness. I can face death. I can face these things. I can face bankruptcy. I can face financial difficulty. I can face all these things because of the promise that I can do all things who strengthens me. There's a promise that God has a plan for me. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace, <clears throat> not of evil, <clears throat> excuse me, to give you a future and a hope. Your future is a good future. It's a plan that God has for you. There's something that God has planned for you. It, there's a hope and a future. There's so many people, and I, you know, suicide is so terrible. It's so awful. I really think they need to address that, especially in the veteran uh, area and the, 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 our military folks. There's a horrible, um, I was going to say, pandemic of suicide in our military. It's a shame. But somewhere or another, they've gotten distracted and they've lost hope. Let, let me tell you, in God, there is hope. If he never leaves you or forsaken you, there's hope. 
If you've got something greater inside of you, there's hope. Understand, that's what happens. We get into despair, we lose hope, and we forget we're overcomers. We forgot we've a conqueror. We've, we've gotten distracted. We've got blinded by these things. Let me just tell you and remind you, we are victorious. There's a few more scriptures that we could go into. The promises of God are yes and amen. Don't forget this one thing from Peter, that the Lord one day is a thousand years and a thousand years of the Lord. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some count slackness, but he's long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. If your promise is tearing, if your promise is waiting, God's waiting on you. God may be waiting on you to repent. He may be using that thing to work something out in you. And God is patient. But understand, God is not slack when it comes to being the promise keeper. He's not slack because he is going to bless you and minister to you. God has promised that he would be in the midst when we gather together. He's here. He's with us. He's with us online. He's with us on the building. Whatever that's going on, God is here with you. Can I just tell you, he is the promise keeper. And he's going to fulfill that promise. He's not slack, but he's going to fulfill that promise. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, the Lord says he promised he'd forgive you. He's just asking you to repent. Do you need to pray that prayer today? If you're in the building, <clears throat> if you're watching on the internet, if you need to pray that prayer, ask Jesus to forgive you. He said he would. That's his promise. He's not a slacker on his promise. So he's going to forgive you of that. Just say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. And I accept you and your promises to forgive me. And I thank you for it. I make you Savior and Lord of my life. I surrender to you. Thank you for accepting me this morning. Amen. If you pray that prayer, that means you're a part of the kingdom. That means Jesus has forgiven you. That's the promise. Let us know if you're on Facebook. Let us know that you prayed that prayer with us this morning. Let us contact you. Let us pray with you. Let us connect with you in a greater way. Here this morning, I just want to encourage those of you that are believers, keep on believing. Keep your faith up. The promise is the promise, and God will fulfill. Judge him faithful. Judge him faithful, and he will perform according to his word, because it's written, and it was necessary to write it. He's going to do it. So whatever it is that you're believing God for, get some word, get some promise that you're believing God for, get it to line up with the word of God, and let God supply and bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand on you. We stand in believing with you, God, that you are the source, you are the supply, God, and we glorify you. We thank you for that. God, that you would bless and minister, Jesus. Pour out and touch. God, we ask you to just to fulfill those promises, those that are standing for a promise, God, that you would fulfill that and do that. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. We want to say thank you for joining us today. I think we're going to have some announcements that's going to be going on and coming. But we want, want you to share this. Let's believe God. If you want to come and join us today, we've got a good turnout for our first time back in the building. You can come and you can make it for the 11 o'clock service if you like. We'd love to have you. We've got plenty of room, plenty of separation going on, lots of masks we see. But thank you all for guys that coming out and being with us here in the building. Thank you for uh, stepping out. We're believing God.
God for great things. We're believing God to break these things off of our country. We're praying against this plague, against this uh, pandemic. And let's just, let's believe God that God to break that. I believe that we need to break that financial uh, curse off of us as well. And release those people back to work and believe God that God's going to do some great things. So let's believe the Lord. Let's stand in faith. Amen. Amen. What a great word. Hallelujah. The promises of God are yes and amen. Hallelujah. We're so glad that you're here with us this morning. We want to let you know that there will be no midweek services here in the building for some time, but we are still doing our prayer call on Tuesday nights at 715. We've had a great turnout on that, and so please join us there Wednesday night at 715. We'll have Bible study back inside of Bishop and First Lady's home been really good. I've enjoyed those as well. Th uh, today, immediately following the 11 o'clock service, we will be giving out food. So if you need food and you'd like to come back and receive that, you can definitely do that um, without an issue. Friday night, our kids will have their Zoom call with Pastor Esther and Candace. And the kids have been having a lot of fun on those calls. And so make sure that your littles get on there. All right, if you would, stand to your feet. We're going to say praise the Lord and be dismissed. One, two, three. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.